Emmanuel. Yep. Good afternoon, good afternoon, my brother. How are you doing? Very good, thank God. Yeah, nice seeing your face. It has been a while. Thank time. you so much. Yes, sir. Yeah, so so sorry. Uh, yeah. Hello, Emmanuel. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I hear you. Yeah, sorry. We have experiencing some network glitches in Nigeria, yes. Yeah, so, 
All right. Yeah. Net, we just have to switch. We switch back to another network now. I think it should okay. be better now. So I think we can. Um, I think we can start now. Can we start? Okay. Okay. okay great. Uh, so you have to. Uh, you have to bring your video, man. All right. Okay, so great. Uh, thank you so much for being here with me. Uh, Pleasure. And I uh, appreciate this. And uh, I think it's very late in the night at your side. So I'm going to do this very fast. Uh, but what is more important to me is that uh, you will agree with me that there are a lot of uh, challenges in Nigeria and, of course, in Africa continent. And uh, we have to find a way to start creating uh, leverages uh, to solve some of these uh, numerous problems. They are very immeasurable. And one of the things that I've, I've also believed that I've always been advocating for is uh, human resource uh, capital. How do we build human capacity? Because I know that the men who built America, the men who built even Japan and all these developed countries today, they are human beings. And it's because deliberate attention has been given to these people. And that is why over the years, they've been able to strive hard to ensure that they get tangible results. Uh, so we are going to also uh, do our own bit, uh, just beyond the, using the government or political or whatsoever to create a social impact for our people. How can they pick one or two things from our experiences to uh, also build their own lives? And that is why, uh, you know, we have to also call it from Sapa to Japa because, you know, 65% uh, of Nigerian population are between the ages of 18 to 28 uh, years of age. And uh, we have to talk uh, in their own language, if you want to catch their attention. And uh, so I want to believe that you also be speaking. Of course, it also cut across a whole lot of uh, age variances. But I also want to believe that you you, you are one person that uh, speaks the language of uh, the younger colleagues. Uh, so, Absolutely. Uh, yes, great. So I'm going to start with uh, asking you uh, to just give a brief, brief introduction of yourself. Uh, and we'll go into the question proper. Thank you. Okay, I'm Emmanuel J.C. Yodan. So, um, I like to tell people every time I'm from Badagri. Um, I'm Egun. I mean, people call it Egun, but we, we are Ogu actually, but they say it's Egun, so it's okay. So, I like to tell people that very well. Um, then, I I finished from Futa, but I did my bachelor's degree and master's degree in Futa, Federal University of Technology at Kure. I did my NYC in Katsina State, after which I, I returned to Futa as graduate assistant. Then I became assistant lecturer when I finished my master's. After 2017, I came to Japan for PhD. I finished PhD 2020, went back to Nigeria for two years and two months. And then I returned to Japan. Uh, so more like I'm a researcher here right now. So uh, I, I don't know if that's enough to, as a as a Yeah, great. Yeah, okay. great. Uh, are you a researcher in a university or a researcher in one of yeah. the industries in Japan? I'm a researcher in Tokyo University where I finished my PhD. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, 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 that is great. So, can you tell me uh, how did you travel abroad? Uh, your traveling experience. How do you move from Federal University of Technology Akure Futa in Nigeria to now get access to uh, yeah. a university in Japan to start to do, uh, to do your PhD? Right, I, I I actually got a scholarship. My scholarship experience is another story entirely. It's, uh, interestingly, so that so that is a story I want to listen to. Yeah. Exactly. Interestingly, um, I was this very driven person right from secondary school. Right, I, I attended Badagri Grammar School, Badagri, and um, I I remember in J, in SS two I was assistant timekeeper, and one of my jobs was to distribute letters on the assembly ground. So there was this time I was sharing letters, and I saw 
um, some America, uh, uh, Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. So since then, I just decided I was not going to even do my bachelor's degree in Nigeria. Okay, before so, you, I before mean, you, uh, uh, Emmanuel, before you continue, so I want to tell, yes. uh, I want to say that you graduated with first class. Yes, please, uh, industrial you, mathematics. Uh, uh, industrial yeah. mathematics. So that is yeah. that is basic, that is fundamental. Right. So okay, yes. you can go ahead. Okay, so from so from that from secondary school, I'd wanted to I did, I, I wanted to study abroad, but the, you know the funny thing. I, I'm from this background where my parents could not even sponsor my Nigerian education, right? But I had this very crazy ambition to study abroad. So I was making all the efforts. But by the time it was time, when it was time to write SAT and TOEFL, SAT then was like $24 and TOEFL was $110. I could, I mean, I could not afford that. So I just knew I had to continue. So the, the other part of the story was I had to. I, was, I wrote jam like five times i got one direct entry form b- before i finally got into futa <laughs> on thread level so that was another story so i had to do uh di- national diploma in marine engineering at uh, federal college of issues and marine technology uh victoria island before so it was after that i came to i i i, I went to futa for bachelor of technology studies uh 2005. so pass pass the manual uh, yeah. mm-hmm. so so you 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 use first when you are doing at what point did you do your uh, diploma at that marine college? Is it after you've done your five jams or before? Uh, okay, in, great. In between? Yeah, I wrote my first jam. I remember I got one. I got two nineteen, maybe, and that wasn't good enough. Then second jam, I got one ninety four. It was at that time somebody just told me, oh, instead of just staying at home, why not just go to this uh, school? Uh, this marine school where you could just uh, do a two-year program and all that so that, that it was at that point so my, my the third jam the fourth jam the fifth all those i wrote while i was in in, in the marine school oh. okay. yeah okay. so you so you can continue your story all right so um so when the whole traveling abroad thing was not working then it was there was not of course i learned there, there have been waves of japa historically in nigeria right so I, I remember I said I heard that in the 80s there was something like that. So I mean, if you so from what I've said, it's not because I felt I, I needed to escape Nigeria. No, I just had this passion. I wanted. Then I was always thinking about attending the best of schools, not minding my background and things like that. So and since I couldn't go, then I felt okay. And one mistake people make is because they want to travel abroad, right? They pause their lives. So, but somehow I, I knew I had to keep making progress and. Finally, um, I finished, I did bachelor's and master's in Futa, and that was the basis on which I, I was able to travel abroad, interestingly. So if I had stopped at that point when I couldn't travel abroad, and I just stopped, you know, making any kind of progress, maybe uh, uh, being abroad would have been out of it, actually. So, I mean, I, I went on like that. Then by the time I finished bachelor's degree, I just knew that no more studies in Nigeria. But somehow, I, I did all the applications. In fact, uh, during youth service, I applied to Oxford University. I saw this Clarendon Fund scholarship that once you are admitted to Oxford, Oxford University, you'd be automatically given the scholarship. So I remember I did the inter. I applied in Katsina when I was still uh, towards the end of my service year. Then when I got to Akure, February 2012, I had the interview. I did not do well on the interview. So I had so somehow I just had to continue. Of, again, that principle of keep making progress, even if you have not, uh, even if you, have, if you are not able to achieve that or that higher goal so to speak so i i, I put, put it for the master's degree to the that graduate assistantship in math department in Futa, and that was it then by the time the master's was done i had in fact right now i can tell you about all kinds of countries on this earth i've applied to mention the country except for few countries that i have reservations about i applied to almost everywhere so after master's again you know i had it i was it, at some point it was it got really very tiring and I had, in fact, I took PhD form in Futa again in 20, 2015. I took the PhD form. But as at that time, I had lost my drive to really continue any kind of studies in Nigeria, right? So finally, 2017, I applied for MEXT scholarship. That's Japanese government, Ministry of Education Science. I mean, they have, they, that ministry has like seven things attached to it. So I applied for that MEXT and I got MEXT scholarship. So I came to Japan 2017, April. Oh, that's that 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 sounds so interesting. So, uh, one 
thing I want to emphasize there is, as you said, for the fact that you are seeking, uh, you finished your first degree and uh, you started thinking about traveling outside the country for your master degree, right. but it wasn't just working, and but you right. didn't pause your life. You didn't pause. Yes. So you yes. said the mistake many people make is that when they want to get back, uh, what mm -hmm. they do is that they pause and they become yeah. so stagnant Everything and eventually stuck, yes. nothing is going like everything is stuck right. uh, with mm -hmm. them. So nothing is going on with them eventually. So and many years but you kept moving so yes. instead of you saying okay why can't i just do my master in nigeria if master is not going mm. to work outside nigeria right. so you started so unlike many people that i've seen uh mm. they did they started their master abroad uh they always feel right. that if i do my master in nigeria i can't get a scholarship again to do my phd exactly. outside nigeria but your case mm. was totally different so yes. uh in 2017 you eventually got another mm. interesting thing about what you said is that you almost applied so I, i'm looking I already here applied. At... i applied for phd i started phd in futa oh you started actually in futa yes so yes. like how many months did you spend before you now moved to uh, you got By two years, I, I, I started 2015. I had lost interest, but then I just had to wow. keep moving. <laughs> wow! 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 Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, what, what, what did you do your PhD on? What is this the industrial mathematics? Oh yeah, my PhD is on uh, 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 mathematical biology. I mean, when I say that, it's always people wonder, like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. It's actually uh, using math to make sense of biology, like in in modeling diseases, ecological interactions. In fact, it borders on sociology sometimes because there's a when you study ecology, right? It gets to a point where you see some of the some ecological things even playing out among human beings. So sometimes I like to call myself a mathematical biologist sociologist and the basic thing is i understand the biological concepts then i bring maths into it then I, I build models and then investigate the model mathematically and then give bi biological interpretation and if it's sociological context it's the same thing okay for instance my phd work was on um group behavior i remember when i was in 200 level in futa back then like um you know we had this very interesting professor professor arabiola who was i mean he was he thought of genus 20 it's a very interesting person so then i remember you know of course in all those big lecture theaters you have you have people they would all be saying all kinds of things sometimes i'll do something i'll be like the normal me will not do this thing but because i was in a crowd so that was the kind of thing I studied during my PhD, like how in information uh, flows, uh, how information information behaves like an infection, like all these uh, fake news and things like that. So I try to understand, I, I look at the concepts like that, then the model is mathematically, solve the model, you know, do some analysis and then uh, interpret my results in the context of what I started with. So that's that's the kind of uh, thing no, I do. That, that, that makes so what, so what, so what, the way. So that, that is, that is great. So what inspired you to pick mathematics in the first place? When you want because you did marine something around marine when you went yeah. for your diploma. So but I know that uh, footers at that time might not be doing something around marine engineering. Uh, so yeah. what inspired you to say you are going for mathematics? Is it because you have failed a lot of journal and you wanted to choose a very easy course? that's an excellent excellent question <laughs> that's a very excellent question really because sincerely i fell in love with maths since uh, when i was in nursery school i had this very strict teacher then in badagri mr Sher, painfully is late now uh, so he was such a serious disciplinarian and so he, he, he had this uh, Imolia Yonosri in primary school, just a start starting up then. So I think I was part of the first, I really well, I was the first, I was part of the first set or so. So he was so strict, he would give us very advanced math stuff. And if we did get, got it wrong, we were se severely punished and all that. So somehow, by the time I entered, I, interestingly, I got into primary school. I, one of the things I like telling people again is I attended local authority primary school, Ajara Badagri local i like to emphasize the local so local yeah so i local, yeah. i went there so, but because of the background i already had of that strict thing about mathematics i, I had i had life I, I had it pretty easy and uh, you know enjoy math i remember in first time in lagos in 1995 lagos State started this annual merit award 
sorry so it's for public primary schools by the way so then uh, the, there were 50 primary schools in Badagri government so all all the students completed so i mean i represented our school this our school came first then i represented Badagri government at the state level 20 local governments we, st- we came first in the whole of Lagos state still so and maths was like one of the core maths english so i remember i got the maths prize and the english prize for that matter so then from there i went to Badagri grammar school so basically i've always had excellent mathematics teachers but because of the nigerian mindset right there was no way i would have told myself when i was leaving secondary school i was going to study mathematics then i i stumbled on a book uh, uh, think big or something one all those, all those motivational books by one i mean so from the book the, so where the, the my takeaway from the book was think very big so i just decided okay i was going to study aeronautical engineering first choice if that didn't work i was going to study marine engineering so then you know i told you i i, I uh, letters as as stand time prefect in Badagi Grammar School. So along that line, I, I told one of my uncles my ambition. So he was like, okay, good. I, I could write letters to universities. And then he would, go, he would post the letters in the airports so that it would cut short the time of. And then the only thing, the, it, uh, it would not take one month to come back. Then it really raining. So it was like after a year, you know, I, I would travel from Badagi to Ibarra to try to you use cafe overnight you know when emails became a thing so to speak mm-hmm. so uh so so along that line so when i couldn't still travel abroad right i i checked uh, this uh, the schools uh taking aeronautical engineering then the only thing close so, to so, 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 pause. so Emmanuel, okay. Emmanuel, pause. so you have been trying yeah. to travel abroad even right from when you are doing your diploma from secondary school uh, yeah from secondary school Oh, from second from secondary school. Yes. Now. So, okay. I wanted to do my bachelor's degree okay. in the US. Yes. In the US. Doing study yeah. that aeronautics or you have marine engineering. Oh, okay. Marine. Okay. Yes. Go on. So I mean, since I couldn't travel, the closest school to to where I could study aeronautics is this Zaria School, National Civil Aviation Authority. But it's usually a postgraduate thing. Maybe after you've studied me- mechanical engineering or electrical engineering somewhere, then you now maybe uh, you get a, a job with an airline and then they sponsor you there. So I did, I discovered that that was not going to work. Then along the line, um, I, I saw I could, I wanted to do marine engineering in River State University of Science and Technology, but because of the distance, I was discouraged. Then my third jump, which was my best jump, the only jump I really prepared for, I got 262 online on the, I saw 262 on the internet and somehow uh, Unilag was going to start mechanic, uh, marine engineering that time. Then I was already doing diploma in marine engineering. So but by the time I got to Unilag, I was told my name was missing on the list. I went to Ikoi uh, jump office and I was told my, my result was withheld. I was wondering why it would be, it would be held, withheld. I, I i i don't cheat in exams i mean it's not as a deeper life boy of course you don't we don't that was totally out of it right so charge boy i mean so then it was like um so then people were saying telling me things like maybe they sold my results and things like that i don't know how true that is though so somehow i couldn't get in so interestingly the co- the marine engineering was not did not take off that year so we ha- we're going to be merged with mechanical engineering in fact, I went to Unilag. Somebody took me to the HOD's office, but my name was not on the list. If not, I would have just got into Unilag. But as I was doing that, you know, in marine, even while studying diploma in marine engineering, I was having a nice time. Like maths was just my thing. I'll teach, I'll teach my, I'll teach my, my mates math. I'll teach my seniors math. I'll teach people behind us math. I mean, I was just all over the place teaching math. So maths was just like that thing. So it was in that place I just discovered. What is end I'm even looking for self? I, then of course I'm exposed to engineering. We we'll go to the. Then I discovered I didn't really like engineering because we we'll go to the workshop, we we'll fire metal, weld things. It wasn't just like my thing. I just like this, this mind, this abstract thing. Bring abstract ideas to, you know, just do calculations and do, and all that. So it was actually in that place I finally decided, oh, okay, this matter I've been running away from. Let me just face it headlong, and that was why I I chose. Um, I think it was my fifth jump. Then I chose industry. The first time I chose math, that was when I got admitted. Actually, so. Oh, so interesting, interesting. So, uh so what? What? What did you did you did you feel that if you have gotten a mentor, uh all these times that you have been struggling to, uh 
you know, go for aeronautics, go for marine engineering, or travel outside the country during your secondary school. Probably if you have chosen maths at your first chance, probably the journey will have been uh, uh, like shortened. Maybe by now, I'll be a school professor. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe by now, exactly. You know, yeah. If, if I tell people that if I was going to rewind, I'll, I'll you know, you know, I'll, well, I'll, I'll go to the and French. Double me. Mm. If I if I mm. rewind, I'll just do math French. Yes. Because I because so, so. Honest, I like different things. I like mathematics i like languages anything called language math i mean french anything just call it language i'm in love then the third thing was construction so but when i went to when i went to graphy right i just then I, I i the construction part went away because of course i was, I was, I was still on top of the class and all, but i was just enjoying myself then because i'm this restless person so if you want to be an engineer sometimes you have to Construct. Like, I remember I did one that one drawing, like an assembly drawing, for twenty four hours. So from there I live because I, I just like to be on the move. I like to be, be on a trip in the airplane, got my laptop and do stuff, not sitting down somewhere and drawing endlessly. But all of those have changed now. But basically, the engineering was just wasn't really resonating well. So the math part, construction part, dropped. So, it, so till till date, I still have my math and languages intact. I, I still love those two. Oh, interesting. So, uh, so how do you see uh, uh, now getting ahead in your career? So, how do you see the role or the impact of a mentor uh, to people that maybe younger colleagues that might want to follow your path? Do you feel or do you think that uh, mentorship? Uh, or getting a mentor very early in life could play a very vital uh, role in taking a very decisive decision. Absolutely, absolutely. Because and that's why I take I don't take I don't joke with mentoring. I have, for instance, right now I have platforms on WhatsApp where I have I, I just share scholarship information, job opportunities. Then I, I ask people questions like, okay, with this thing. I mean, I that that's like I've dedicated dedicated my life to all of this, like all over the all over the world in fact like i, like I, have, I have guys in sweden high school students in sweden that i want i advise i sometimes i put them through mathematics and things like that and all over the place because i, I have seen that you know you don't have to well maybe, i think i've accepted my fate that sometimes i i think I, I have to go through difficulties so as to make life easy for others so i and i wear the badge mm -hmm. with all with all pleasure right so, so i have groups on whatsapp where uh, i share scholarship and job opportunities then of course, if you I mean if you follow some of the things I do online, so I have this group called the Real Boys Forum. Growing up as a boy too, and seeing that like the very the context I like to set for it is this. I was a I've, I've been a fellowship. The real, uh, sorry, the Real Boys Forum. Can you type the can, can you say that again so that I oh, okay so Real so. Boys Forum R E A L B O Y S R E A L Yes, uh, maybe I'll type it in the chat. Okay, yeah, good. Real boys forum so i i, I won't give back to that is you know i mean as a i was a fellowship boy i saw fellowship leaders across fellowships this dis discover all of them they are it is daughter they are more interested in the daughters and the sons and i'm like who is taking care of the boys so from there i just developed this passion that okay the boys too need some attention so i mean you uh, you could so you could easily see me hanging out with the guys you know talking to them and things like that so so that that was a very that, that 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 became very serious so i started that this january first and so i get to write every day and as i write um we discuss and deliberate on all of these things we have a group i think right now we should be around 150 people there you know talking about different so i write on 10 different areas like academics career um leadership marriage relationships spirituality personal development so i, I take turns to write interestingly um you know once i write up to 60 articles that's going to become a book and our first book should be coming out by end of the, this march ending or april it will be on amazon oh, interesting. online yeah what is it so, i mean i think mentoring extremely useful wisdom for young men that's the, that's the title of the book um so it's going to be okay. like I, i'm hoping to write four before the year ends so that's um that's that i mean so men that's to, to portray the fact that i've come to see that 
mentoring is extremely important people don't have to go through unnecessary issues when they have the proper guide so for me i've taken my faith that yes i had to go through the tough road even even when it comes to the issue of coming to japan or scholarship and all that since i came like two or three people or four people that i know have you know they have come like that like maybe they've been you know so you know sometimes people are just fixated on the us or the uk and things like mm-hmm. that but mm-hmm. it's not necessary because if i went to the us maybe by now i wouldn't have finished my phd i finished my phd since 2020 and i, I have i've lost anything for not going to the us the only thing is that mm, maybe the language course, makes it easier and all that okay. yes so so can you can you, so you can speak japanese I speak Japanese well as I I I I can speak uh, English, French, Ogu, and Yoruba. But I mean, I try. I can hold down a conversation intermediate level. So uh, can you tell me? Uh, uh, so we are in uh, the time in Nigeria is three forty four p.m. So can you uh, say good afternoon, uh, Nigerians, uh, in Japanese? Uh, uh, good afternoon. We, there's no, no literal good afternoon. The popular greeting is konnichiwa and it's more like hello. Konnichiwa, like you can say that almost any time. But if it is evening, it, it, it's like um ombanwa, that evening. So for afternoon, basically okay. konnichiwa should just work for that, yeah. Okay, konnichiwa. So uh so uh, now uh good great. Uh so uh so I I Japan, you just said something now that uh, quite a number of people, most actually in Africa, uh, uh, they always connect their thinking to United States, Canada, UK. Uh, so uh, how do you see Japan uh, since you have been in Japan? You, you traveled to Japan in 2017, right? Uh, right. Right. So you must have spent like, uh, uh, of course, I know that you came into Nigeria at a point. Yeah, I did so three and a half years like three f- Japan. Nights, roughly okay. four and a half, they're about going to five put together you are spent in japan you are great yeah. so almost five years in japan now yeah. so uh, uh how do you see their culture how do you see uh, the country in terms of economy in terms of technology in terms of growth compared to nigeria or compared to africa as a continent mm, yeah the one thing that stands out with japan is that they have they have found a very very they have found wisdom to merge culture and technology together in a very funny way like they, uh, i don't know how to explain it it's so i don't know how to do it I, I don't think there is no way you go in japan like maybe any street in a major city local place i don't think there's any street you walk and that you won't see a shrine or a temple you'll find it wow. so how how they've managed to do that i don't understand so you have a, this blend of culture and and modernity together very delicate. So, that, so that means you have been attending their, so that means you have been attending their shrine or oh, is it not no is, like is, i mean i and i attend church okay so there are churches in japan and there are mosques yeah there are churches there there are mosques yes the only thing is that the, the population of japanese the, uh there's the only one one percent of christians in japan oh. japan has a population of like 23 123 million people roughly and they have just one percent christians muslims are even less than that you know so so, so, so what is the so i'm just trying to emphasize. i get so what is the racism like uh because you are there in japan and well you're among the one percent christian uh, uh, well, uh, uh, okay. Can you Japan is a very free place. You can do whatever you like. Okay. You can walk on your head if you like. Oh. You don't. Nobody cares. It's a very free place. Okay. As far as you don't disturb another person, as far as you don't uh, disturb the other people's peace, you know, p- people are very mindful of all that. So the, in the, the train, in the train, in the bus, you, don't, you know, I mean, there's all those behavior because full of the next person what runs this society. So it's not. You can do whatever you like as far as you're not bothering somebody else no there's no restriction of but you don't pick a call you, or you, but you don't pick it you don't pick a call you don't pick a call in the train you don't pick a call it's at a public bus, bus. Is that, is public, that a... yes no, you don't pick calls okay. yes yes some foreigners do it but okay, i mean is, over time you have to okay. but normally it's, it's like it's not like if you pick a call like somebody's going to arrest you no but it's just it's just that be mindful of others that's all so do whatever okay. work on your head if you like but don't disturb other people oh okay oh, okay awesome so uh, uh so now can you tell me something around the uh, how governments 
in Japan is open to innovation, uh, technology, uh, invention, and uh, of course, I know Japan has been one of the oldest countries when it comes to yeah. uh, innovation and invention. So, are they still maintaining that culture? Is government giving more support, or are there more partnerships around private institutions or universities and stuff like that? Yeah, one thing I know is that Japan spends a whole lot of money on education, and that's why it's very painful for me. Like, you know, when some of my friends see me today, they, they laugh at me because you know, I was this very crazy, passionate guy that I see we are coming back to Nigeria, we are going to move mountains and everything. And I came back two years, oh, look, guys, I was just two sorry. years. Sorry, sorry, Emmanuel. Sorry, Emmanuel. Yeah. Before, hello, Emmanuel. Before you continue, Olu Benga, yeah. Chade said you are a pastor from your hundred level in Futa. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, now. Now I felt that's our fellowship person, <laughs> bros. <laughs> are you still a pastor? Yeah. Are you still a pastor? pastor? Yes, for sure. Now you're in J now you're in Japan. Are you still a pastor? Yeah, that's an, you know, that's another problem, right? You're in Japan. Are broken, they lose their and they lose their Christianity or their stand because they are, the question okay. Christianity they'll be practicing is for bread and butter or it's for what they can get from God. Mm -hmm. But if you know that Christianity is not all about mm -hmm. uh, having light or not having light or something, you know, in fact, maybe I'm a better Christian now than even before. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. That's why the fact that you are among just the one percent population. So exactly. You are thinking you are a better Christian more than when you are even in Nigeria. Yes. That is, that is very because it's not about bread and butter. It's not about like so the a, a, a test of someone's religion or your Christianity is going abroad. If you go abroad and you can still maintain your standard, then we then we'll know you, you've been solid all along. So many people go abroad and then all of a sudden they are saying some funny things and you're like, what is wrong with this one? <laughs> no. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, 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 right. So can you quickly just conclude and put in a board on this uh recent development of uh, uh Japanese government on uh on uh, technology and yes. we are talking about artificial intelligence now, machine learning, nanotechnology and there are quite a lot of yeah. stuff. Uh, how, how is Japan, uh, how, how are they ready to take on quite a number? It has been long we have had them around these uh, stops. Yeah, I, I think that uh, interesting. They are more into hardware than software. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, so, sometimes, right, J Japan is a country of paradox, right? It's, um, you know, there was this economic boom in the 80s and everything. And if you ask a typical Japanese now, they are, they, I mean, things are not really, the economy is not really doing well. But, I mean, it's funny, right? You, you know, I think the case is just like this. To, uh, I mean, I, I can use myself as an example. I remember my first results when I was studying marine engineering, right? I got 92 in chemistry and I went to meet the teacher that, sir, what happened to my eight marks? And he understood, he brought out my script, he told me, okay, you did not balance the situation well, you missed three marks, you did not balance this one, you missed five marks. And, you know, people were there begging to get 40 and pass. So, you know, as far as the Japan is, the typical Japanese is concerned, they feel that the economy is, is not doing well. Of course, by global standards, right? Japan is like, maybe yeah, hovering between the third and fourth right now. It was stored for a long time, but I let, it's like Germany took over like last month or something. You know, this whole global recession thing, right? So I mean that that is there. So, so, the, so the recession is global. It's not only in, so uh, Emmanuel. Yeah, so the, the recession is global. global. It's in Nigeria. Oh, exactly, okay. it's global for sure. But the, the oh, funny yeah. part is that as the recession is hitting, the government is cushioning the effect. Like you know, hmm. when during guess what during COVID, right? Every living being that was in COVID, then we we just had our baby February, twenty nineteen. And in April, so we, had, we had registered and everything. So, but do you know what happened during COVID? Every living soul in Japan, every human being, baby or adult, the government gave hundred thousand yen to everybody, whether you are foreigner or Japanese. It didn't matter, you know. So you see, that's the difference. There's recession everywhere, but what is what is the responsiveness? So every everywhere I, there's recession. I, I, are, you, are you a citizen now? Are you a I mean, a get, to get citizenship in Asia is just is not that uh, it, it's not it's they it, it don't give their citizenship even if you give birth to a child yet yeah, the child has to be like twenty or twenty one before and oh, the, the, she, okay. before she now decides she wants to be Japanese or not so, so the not, hundred so the hundred thousand so the hundred thousand Japanese yen was given not because you are a citizen just be, because you are in their space because you are here they feel responsible for you 
is and, and, and for me that's what government should be about right the well-being of the people so um, you know some other countries gave to their citizens but the japanese government gave to everybody as far as you, are, you were registered by april of 2019 as far as whether whoever you are, as far as you are living here so i mean and for me there's recession everywhere but every so serious governments are thinking of how to how to make sure people don't feel it a so, question. I mean, then, what, yeah, let me talk about the innovation part, right? Okay, when, talk, when it comes to innovation, right, the, the the Japanese system is a very conservative one, right? So, there are, of course, there are, there are a lot of high things happening. Sometimes I'm even confused as to how to explain Japan, right? Now, you see a whole lot of advancement and everything, but you also know that things could be better because, you know, before the, the, the change they are not so aggressive with change like that they want to maintain the status quo as much as possible but by global standards they are still way up there you know but for me though the biggest challenge i see that japan has is language issue because for instance if you look at the best universities in asia they are in they are in hong kong they are in singapore they are in maybe china is even up there right and what an advantage do Hong Kong and Singapore? Singapore is just an island, just not up to Lagos State. Singapore is just a, a people of a population of 5.6 million people. But then, the, the, the top, I think top, they have one or two universities in, among top 10 universities in the world. Singapore, just one tiny island. Then you have Hong Kong to just, and the only advantage I see that these people have is that they they do their research in English, they publish in English and everything. So it's like Japan is trying to catch up now, but it's looks like it's rather late but of course maybe never late so there's a lot a whole lot of heavy investments in 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 uh you know making sure you have this globalized research where language is no longer a barrier and everything okay so that, 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 that so there is a follow-up question like is there a language barrier and what is the hope of getting a job without understanding their language uh without so, understanding the language it's yeah, that's okay what, uh, James like part. for me now even with the little japanese i speak right I have limited job options like you know of course in the university system it's just you know i mean uh it's global stuff now so you have to i did my phd in english even and all that but if you really want to be here so for me the biggest challenge is about the language right and you know i told you i'm in love with languages so i actually came 2017 hoping that i would have mastered japanese so much that i would translate at tokyo 2020 but after six months i just told myself guy face your research <laughs> because and the basic thing is the, the writing the scripts right all the kanji all these chinese characters this i mean if not for those right maybe if i had, if i had gone to a place like brazil or spain or so i mean i would still have coped it because the writing style is still close to what we be writing in english so for me i think the biggest barrier here would be the language so it's either you brace up i mean i have people the, the, i i got into uh, my phd program with a, a friend from sri lanka day then after one year he was he was doing his presentation to me but for maybe maybe because oh. he's single he doesn't have he doesn't have worries about the responsibilities right? like, okay. yeah, so, yeah but, i mean for me i wished i could do that but i mean yeah. there are other things to, to, mm. to talk about yeah mm. that, 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 that that makes that makes a lot of sense so yeah. uh what is your plan your five years plan are you still going to be in japan or you are coming back home to nigeria well in five years i'll go where, wherever god wants me to go that's how i do that's how my movement is like i, I i'm not i don't care I, I i can be anywhere i don't have a problem as far as god is leading me that's all so but of course i have i've always had three i've always had three areas of interest um lecturing diplomacy i mean maybe science diplomacy like work with um, some multinationals or something then of course the third one is the the, the spiritual side of things right so these are like my, my things so the number one i just like to teach I want to be in the university system as much as possible but of course i can maybe also do some development stuff basically so those are like my key interests that makes that makes that makes sense uh that makes a lot of sense uh and uh so how do you see uh, i think my second to the last question would be how do you see the landscape of nigeria today uh you are in diaspora uh how much information maybe negative or positive or both uh, are you hearing uh, about nigeria uh, how do you see nigeria as of today 
And do you have, are you optimistic that uh, Nigeria is going to uh, move from this uh, face of uh, numerous challenges uh, it's facing now into a better country, probably like uh, Singapore, or Japan, or other de- uh, countries that are doing well today? Well, I mean, <laughs> everything rises and falls on leadership like this. Eh? Of course, there are also mm-hmm. people who argue that, you know, lead- leaders, uh, leaders are products of the followers. I mean, you have all those debates going on, but the fact remains that at the end of the day, you, need, you still need people to step up and tell people this is the way to go. I think that's that's the basic problem we have, right? We have, I mean, I can't, each time I go to the lobby and I'm like, God, I, I could be doing this. I mean, I'm from Badagri, right? I currently work on, I current, I'm currently working on a lake. And in Badagri, we have river, we have ocean, we have all of these things. I wish I could, be, I'm doing these things for Nigeria, but who cares? Nobody cares. And all these things require heavy investment. Now, in the lab here, you can see a professor, just one equipment is like 100 million yen, 100 million yen, not Naira. One equipment, mm. one professor, and they have like hundreds of those. So you see, like, until we are ready, we are, I think basically, for me, I think once we can get our education right, every other thing will be fine. We just need functional education. And by that, I don't even mean everybody should have PhD. Just make sure you have citizens that have, they can make, they can, for me, education is basically being able to read and write get information when you need it and use it to better yourself and the society once we can get that from if you can get people who have functional education from gss1 to S, uh, from primary one to gss3 alone you know here once you have gs3 education you are you are good to go that's going you can your life is set you can go on so for me i i, I believe we are, we are i mean forgetting politics or forgetting all of those things we are, we are joking with education and it is very painful it's very painful. Like, I mean, I was talking to one of my friends who is a politician like two days ago that you guys should wake up. Stop. We are wasting the way. It's not, we don't have to do this as a country. It's so painful. What did, what, what did he say? What was his response to you? When yeah, you I mean, you know, the normal politician talk now, they, uh, uh, they are trying uh, this one. Uh, mm-hmm. And they are the ones in power, interestingly. Mm-hmm. So I hope I hope they wake up to the reality. It's painful. It's not about so the, I don't care about the politics. Just get you know in America, right? Whether it's Joe Biden or Donald Trump, they have systems in place that whoever is there, there are some minimum standards that you cannot go below. So and then you have regulations. Of course, they have their issues. That you know everybody have their issues, but how are we responding to them? That's what matters at the end of the day. Great. What changed your perspective about life? Uh, how did you move from being a local Badagri uh, local boy uh, that went to a local uh, secondary school, public school, uh, to somebody today that uh, you are moving to become very soon to become a professor uh, uh, in research, academic, doing a lot in around mathematics, uh, you know, breaking barriers, even right from your secondary school days. So what changed your perspective as Emmanuel? So I, I, I'll summarize that. Like... I'll summarize that into just one word: information. And of course, information uh, comes from reading, right? So I remember right from right from when I was in local authority primary school. There, if you remember, there's this chewing gum. So is this sword now? So that when after yeah, taking the gum, I'll find what yeah. is the capital of Finland? And you turn it over, and it's Helsinki. So I mean, I started mm. with things like that, like okay you know just i just wanted to know i just wanted to know so today when i travel to places and i'm like okay when i when i go to a place like singapore i've always had a picture of singapore in my mind maybe right from primary or secondary school i've already already had that idea that okay if when i came to japan it was like i was i was already had pictures in my head so because of information and that is why i i just i cannot imagine of course anybody around me they're not even born you have to just almost i've infected everybody around me with phd book like even if you don't like book somehow if it's if you're around me you just want to do your phd although it's not that's not that's not a big deal right but the fact that you you are getting information you're getting better by just you know my definition of education like i said it's being able to read write source for information and use the information to better yourself and your society so once everybody can get to that point it doesn't matter whether you have phd or not you know we'll have a better society basically so for me to be information through reading through 
you know, this kind of conversation, engaging in conversations that will stimulate my thinking and everything. So basically information. So I want to, I, I want to know that there's something that you can aspire for it. You cannot go on for something that, that, doesn't, that you don't know even exist in the first place. And that is when I'm teaching, I mean, this is, I get it. Like I told you, uh, if I, I, I like to talk too much. Hi. <laughs> if I if I want to summarize my life into two of the things that drive me, yeah, you know, I want to uh, teaching, making things clear to people. One, two, ma- arranging, making things in order. So that that would make me like a teacher and administrator, basically. So the, at the core, right? I, I see myself as a teacher and an administrator, basically. So I want to break down things. Be it Bible, mathematics, data science, anything I teach, I want to make it like really digestible. Then I want to make sure nothing, everything is in order. So uh, I can't imagine somebody was asking that. Will you recommend Japan with your full chest? Why not? I recommend it in my full chest. Yeah, I recommend it in my full chest. Yes. So um, Uh, the only the only challenge is the make the key challenge, like you already know, is the language, all right? So once you're ready to, of course, I can hold, I can, I can find my way around this country i don't have a problem finding my way around but when it comes to very serious things like at very advanced levels then the language can be a barrier here and there so that for me that's the only that's a major issue that i personally have here but of course probably if i had if i had, had my way of you know you know getting very well with the language maybe that maybe that would have been minimized a bit. but it's fine i mean it's a good experience so from here going anywhere else is pretty it's not it's like a piece of cake so to speak interesting so uh that means uh so my my my, uh, my other question quickly would be that uh will you recommend will you tell an average nigerian or an african to get exposure to travel out of the country maybe to study or to japan uh if well uh what will you say about that now what if, tra- you know- if, uh, sorry if your answer is yes at what age if your answer is yes at what age Will you tell someone to stop and don't bother about it again? And even if you travel, you might not make much out of life. Okay. Um, generally speaking, right? Let's even assume. Okay, of course, well, I, I don't even have to go too far, right? So, I mean, there are people. <laughs> we have many people in this Japan that all they do is they walk and they, just to go and just to travel to see a new place. So, for basically. Even whether, even when, if the if the economy is, uh, how do I put it now? Even when the economy is fine, right? Uh, people still need to go out because sometimes if you don't go out, you don't, you cannot, you don't have a broad world view to where you, the, the the more places you travel to, right? The more your your horizon is widened, the more you you get to see the world in a better part in a better light. So generally speaking even if you don't have to jump by it's good just even if it's Bene, go to Bene and see things like there are things that will inspire you in Bene. like right go if you can afford it go any just travel somewhere just go for one week come back then when it comes to the japa thing of course i'll i'll basically that that's that's a, it's a personal thing because i know it can be really a big issue like oh you know there's a, a whole contention around it but but i mean w- one thing i i encountered is you know you know, you hear, you hear things around things like, oh, uh, first class students don't, uh, they, they don't end up rich and things like that. And I'm like, I, I, I like to, I do, I like to break all those rubbish kind of thinking, right? <laughs> so are you so, rich? Emmanuel, are you rich? Yeah, I'm, I'm not there. I'm, I'm on my path. I'm on my way, right? And, and that's okay. why I, I keep seeking information. So in the process of seeking information, uh, you know, I, I, I started listening towards the end of my PhD. I started listening to one uh, South African guy, Donald Douglas Kruger. So and he was talking about, you know, if you want to be, of course, the goal finally is financial freedom, where it doesn't matter where you are, uh, the, whether you are working or not. You, are, you don't have money is not your problem. The only so and my goal finally in that regard is. I want to get to that point where the only thing that stops me from doing something is God, not money. So, and I'm on, I'm on that journey, right? So, and that's why, info, you know, seeking information. So, what, some of the things that I learned from Douglas Kruger is that he said he talks about a research that was conducted. Of course, most of the time, these things are in the context of America, right? But if you want, so based on empirical data, right? People that really make it, number one, they are they are, they have one wife. They are committed to one wife. One. 
okay, okay maybe, yeah. maybe i think i'm too fast with that number one they have a right. university degree or they okay, have a they have a degree they have education so i would okay. i would just say that to mean basic a uh, 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 bachelor's degree in the nigerian context any breast you just get bachelor's degree one two marry one wife and be committed to that one wife then the third thing is have good work ethics and the other thing is learn about all these investments and all of these things then one of the things they mentioned at some point is sometimes you, you may need that leverage of traveling somewhere so you can build your financial capacity so even if at the end of the day you still want to do something back in your country of course there are people in nigeria who are doing who they, they don't need they don't need to do the, the money they even make in Nigeria, they, they can't make it abroad, you know. So so everybody is own. Some people go abroad and they make it. Some people return from abroad and come back to Nigeria and they make it. So either way, at the end of the day, go where God wants you to be. Don't do go anywhere because everybody is going there. Go where God wants you to go. Basically, I know that that may sound preachy or something, but sincerely, that there are some advice I can't give outside the context of my of my being uh, of my work with god right because that i know that ultimately that's what works awesome so, I mean, awesome that, that's awesome it, yeah awesome so uh are you investing in nigeria definitely yeah definitely yeah, definitely. yeah some things are coming up you you yeah, i mean every, everybody will get to see about that like especially when it comes to tech and things like that so okay so of yeah. course Emmanuel is a tech person, he's more of a tech enthusiast. Uh he's very passionate about tech and not just mathematics, very passionate about tech. And uh, uh you guys should watch out uh, uh for his innovation in Nigeria because one of the most uh, beautiful things that I've noticed is that no matter the number of countries that you have traveled to, uh if you are not bringing the impact back home. You are not bringing the impact back to Nigeria. Uh, for me, it's just like we are not yet there yet. We are wasting our time. But uh, you are someone that I've seen, at least I've seen quite a number of things that you are doing. And I've noticed that uh, you are working so hard and so smart to ensure that as you are making wave in Asian uh, region, you are also bringing bad value. Uh, back home and you are doing a lot of mentorship and impact and whatsoever so uh my last question would be that what is your parting shot uh for nigerians for africans luckily funny enough you are the first guest uh with me and uh you know, I, I i there might be some little glitches but uh i can assure you that uh, this video is going to reach thousands of people. Uh, they are going to uh, work on it, post it, uh, run hats for it. It's going to reach thousands of people because you have said something that is very key, information. And yeah. that information must be coming from the right set of people. We have a lot of information on social media today that are very diluted. They are, mm. they are not the type of information that young people even should have access to you and that right. is one of the reasons why i'm doing this i want a situation whereby we are too lost we are too lost mm. in mundane in mundane things in nigeria right. in africa um, and everybody just keeping quiet if there is a gossip mm. now if there is something like like a like a controversy now everywhere you know we, yeah we or somebody wants to marry wife in jamaica i wonder why that's something we're to marry in jamaica <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You know, you know, and quite a number of us are living our, our very secretive life, and mm -hmm. we have so much values. We have so much values. Yeah. And, and it's not mm -hmm. as if people don't want to connect with us, but it's because they don't have access to these things. This is yeah. not what they are seeing on their Facebook. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just about going to school, but it's about yes. uh, being able to derive and get out sources from whatsoever right. thing that you are studying, which is very, mm -hmm. very important. You know, if you are making money, how are you making the money? It's not just about mm -hmm. making the money. Yeah. If you are in business, if you are in research, if you are in invention, if you are in technology, uh, how are you making the money? What are the ABC? What are the steps? Mm -hmm. You know, that is what is very, uh, you know, passionate to me as a yeah. person. So, uh, and I think we are going to, I have uh, laid out quite a lot of people like you. You know, I have a lot of you people in my in my data. I just look at my data one day, I said, over a thousand people that I know spread across wow. the world. 
can you imagine those who work in actively for nigeria i mean you you get it you get it, I mean, that it is so it. serious Mm-hmm. Even if it is just the information they are just giving out to Nigeria, yes. it, it's something big. It's something mm-hmm. big, and not yeah. everybody have has that money to go and uh, uh, to go to even maybe have the same opportunity that you have. But they can just stumble mm-hmm. on a video like this and they get inspired. And yeah, and I mean, I, also, I, I think I want to put you there for. I mean, you've okay, made a ahead. very valid point, right? You may not have the money. But as far as you keep getting information, you may be delayed, but you will get somewhere. And that is my Perfect. story, right? Like, it, it's not about money. It's more about information than even money. Information will bring the money along the line, for sure. Great, great. Information will bring the money along the line. Mm-hmm. Even, even if you are delayed, it doesn't yeah. matter. I, I think... Right. Okay, great. So, uh, sure, sure. so why is your parting shot? Uh, yeah, why is your parting shot uh, for Nigerians for Africa? Because uh, time is against me, and you need to go. You yeah, basically, I mean, I, I think yeah, the summary is just that get inform. If it, I mean, the distance between the 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 difference between where you are and the next place you have to be is information right and w- when i teach I, back in the full time times when i was when i whenever i taught academic seminars i always talked about information association and orientation you know maybe i mean i don't have time to unpack all of that but you see information ties everything together get the right information what do you do you want to become like elon musk it may not look like it now but as far as you can see that possibility maybe get a book on elon musk and interesting just type elon musk you can already the information you get already can already transform your thinking put it on the pedestal where you can digest a higher level of information and before you know it you might just go the next elon musk right there and that that's that's very possible so once we can once you know it's there and you're open up to it and then it, it, it can start from there sorry um it, it looks not so coordinated and if you don't mind, I can also put this on my on my YouTube channel. I mean, I started a YouTube yes, channel like you, a month you. ago. I, okay. And it, interesting. part of the interesting, right, interesting thing, right, is that you know, I, you know, I've taught maths over the years, and of course, I've got very excellent feedback. So I feel, why should it? Okay. So if I just drop there today, so that thing we just end up. I was just like, yeah. So now I just push out all the everything I know. I just want to. So I, I I have a YouTube channel where I teach math, and I, then our activities on Real Boys Forum I put it there too. Just every kind of information that anybody needs. I mean, for, I, I talk about life, I talk about math, I talk about wisdom for life, and all those things. Can you drop your YouTube channel uh, on, the, on the on the on the on the shop? Yes, d- done. Oh, okay. So great, great. Yes. Now, uh, you will get the you can you will get the uh, link of the video. Okay. Uh, after it has been uh, downloaded, you can put it All on right. your YouTube or your Facebook. And uh, of course, this one will also go uh, far to so that quite a number of people because a lot of parents are also watching this. And uh, yeah. of course, I know a lot of kids struggle with mathematics and it's very yes. innovative for somebody exactly. like you to open a YouTube channel and you'll be teaching, you are teaching mathematics. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of people who want to show interest in this. This is very, very commendable. Very, very right. commendable. You know, quite a number of times you see people in abroad and they will tell you they don't have time, they don't, they, they cannot give back. And I think this is going to be an encouraging moment for a lot of people that we even watch. I've seen quite in one or two people watching from diaspora that I've seen. Uh, it's going to be an encouraging moment for them to say, oh, okay, I can also give back no matter how busy my schedules can be. And I think mm-hmm. I appreciate what you are doing. Thank you very much. Uh, Emmanuel, My pleasure. Uh, thank you. I can't, uh, thank you, and I can't thank you enough. And I know that you will get the feedback uh, of this. All right. And uh, I, I wish I could wish attend to some of the questions in the chat, but I mean, uh, we don't have. To. Yes, <laughs> yes. Actually, I asked. I asked one or two of them. I asked yeah. one or two of them. Uh, but if there are any other questions, I will throw it. Uh, to yeah, we. Can, I mean, we can uh, connect on my channel. So I have a, the, the community part. You can just go there and drop a question, or you can drop. I mean, just drop a question. Then I'm on social media everywhere. My full name yes. is Manuel Jesus mm-hmm. Jansu. Everywhere, Twitter, LinkedIn, yes. everywhere. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Just walking exactly. around. So and you can always attend to those questions later. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mayoga Fadeum. 
Adeyin Kawashin from America. He's one of the he's one of the men that hosted me when I was in USA. So interesting. Uh, yeah. Yes, so and I like this. If somebody quoted you. It might be delayed, but you will de- definitely get there. Yes. Ife Udi. Ife Udi. Don't stop trying. Don't stop trying. Yeah. Don't, stop trying. Mm-hmm. Don't stop trying. It's all about yeah. pushing and getting the right yeah. information like this. Getting the right access. Uh, thank you yeah. guys. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, we need to go now. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thanks a lot for the platform. I'm grateful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Take Sorry. care of yourself and be safe. You too. Thank you.